Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Watercolor Wednesday. I'm Leslie Watkins. I hope everybody's doing well. Today's going to be a kind of a quick lesson. Um, I am getting ready for a holiday fair and I need to create a little um, kind of a watercolor background for some of the cocoa packs that I'm going to be making. And so for that, I've got out a couple of blue reanchors. I've got Night of Navy and Misty Moonlight. I have my Night of Na Navy pad here. I've got my water painters, which are the brushes that have the reservoir in the handle. I'm probably going to be using this big wide one today, the flat. And I'm going to be using one of my most favorite die sets, the deckled rectangles. Okay, so I use these all the time. They, I keep them right next to my desk. I'll be using two of those. And I have my Fluid 100 watercolor paper. So this is five by seven sheets. There are 10 of them to a pack and uh, they're 100% cotton. So they're not going to crack or turn yellow. And they're a really convenient size. They're five by seven, which is great for um, greeting cards. And also it's 140 pound paper. So it's stiffer than a uh, average card stock, which means that it's going to help to create some extra body for my project, and that's going to be perfect. So I'm going to move these things off the desk for a minute. I'm going to get out my stamp and cut and emboss machine so that I can get my pieces ready. And I'm checking my settings to make sure that you can see and hear me. And that looks good. These things off the there we go. Okay, so my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine is here. And if you're someone that is getting really interested in doing some paper crafting, maybe making some um, cards, not only Christmas, but year-round cards, boxes, gifts, all those sorts of things, you may want to um, gift yourself a cut and emboss machine for Christmas this year. I would really recommend it. And, um, and if you have any questions, if I can help you to um, know how to go about that, I'd be happy to do that. So I'm going to put my full-size sheet of the Fluid 100 watercolor. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to angle it slightly, okay, because I'm using this second from the largest die and it helps it to go through the machine a little bit better if you put it through at an angle. And I'm going to get that as close to the edge as I can. And then I, in this area, this is the one I'm going to be using, but I'm going to go ahead and use the next size die and just make use of that leftover paper there. All right, so there we go. Put on my second plate, pass that through. Now this watercolor paper is a little bit thicker than um, the cardstock, as I said. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and just send that through again, just to make sure I have a nice clean cut. And that's all there is to it. So now when I remove the dies, I have these gorgeous deckled edges, and I think you can see that. So that's going to be really beautiful on the card and give it a wonderful finished look.
Okay, now the inks are water-based inks, which means that you can use them very much as you would watercolors. They're a little bit different, but close enough. And, um, and that means that there are a lot of different techniques that you can use with the inks. And sure enough, somebody just heard me say ink, and I think we're going to have a visitor in just a minute. We'll see. I'm done with these for the moment. And I think what I want to do is I'm going to get my plexiglass out, if I can put my hand on it. There we go. Because I want to give these these um, pieces of paper a really good spritzing. So I'm just going to go ahead, give that a good spritzing. And what, what's going to happen is the water is going to be absorbed by the paper. Because this paper is a little bit thicker, it's going to take a minute before it gets or absorbed all the way through. But that's enough to get it started. The image that I'm going to be working with is a vertical image. Actually, I'll do one horizontal and one vertical. And, um, and what I like to do is to just use my stamp case to put the drops of ink in the lid. So I'll leave that out and then for the misty moonlight I'm gonna go ahead and put some on this plastic lid here and I and I only need two or three drops okay this stuff is really strong it's very concentrated you need very little all right now what I'm looking to create is a nighttime sky. I'm just going to smooth those water droplets so that I have a nice, smooth, damp surface here. I'm going to begin with my... Now these two colors, the Misty Moonlight and the Night of Navy, are very close to one another. So I'm just going to start at the top and I want to make sure I get all the edges and I'm going to create a very simple gradation just like so. Do the same thing over here. You can add whatever colors you like. And um, if you want to do a, a sunset, for instance, you might want to add a little warm colors at the bottom towards the, the horizon line. But I'm looking for a nighttime sky because what I'm planning on doing is adding some heat embossing to this. And you can see me do that tomorrow when I complete the project. So every week, you can join me live here on Facebook at 12 noon at Dandelion Cottage Design. And that's Eastern Standard Time. And then on Thursday, I come back for Paper Crafting Thursday. And this time, it's going to be a double header because I'm going to start with the watercolor or the painting with ink today and then tomorrow I will come back with um, the finished product. So um, if you're interested in making some cute cocoa packs for stocking stuffers or Christmas presents or for, um, for handing out to, your, to the people that you see at the grocery line or the bank or the post office, these make wonderful fun gifts to keep with you this time of year so that you can distribute them. 
All right, so that's my that's my misty moonlight. I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to switch now to my night of navy, which is a darker, richer color. I'm going to start very dark at the top and just let that blend as I go down into the misty moonlight. Now, if you like, you can let this dry and you can come back in a second time and do just the same thing and you'll be able to get even darker. But I think this is probably gonna be sufficient for what I have in mind. Okay, I think that's about it. Maybe bring this one down a little bit more. I'm going to go back in to this one, make that a touch darker. And that's really all there is to it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a whole bunch of these and um, I'll see you again tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. We'll give these a chance to dry and I'll show you the next step and then I will show you how I use them to create a very cute hot cocoa pack. So thank you so much for joining me. Oh, I see some, I see Ginger and Cheryl. Good morning, ladies. Nice to see you here. This is a quick and easy um, technique to create a background for some of your projects. And, um, and I will be back tomorrow for Paper Crafting Thursday to show you what I do with them. So stay well, stay happy, stay creative, and I will see you next time.